Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's update our views on Anthony Joshua's defense of his titles against Kubrat Pulev. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, I believe the public has this fight wrong, dead wrong. The odds right now have heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua as a seven to one favorite. Again, a seven to one favorite. I think this is a complicated fight. I'm aware of the fact that Pulev is 39 years old. But I think this is a complicated fight that's going to have high drama where Joshua is going to get tested. Joshua might even, in the UK, find himself behind on the scorecards. I think this is the kind of KG vet, style-wise, who's going to push this fight into the later rounds. And I think Joshua, a cautious fighter, a craftsman, who doesn't trust his tools? I think Joshua's going to have to get out of his shell, and he's going to have to be aggressive. When he opens up, understand, Pulev is a fastball pitcher. His jab is his game. An argument can be made that it's the best jab in the heavyweight division. As Joshua opens up, sharpshooter, Pulev, who's accurate with the jab, who knows how to throw it and then tuck you under his armpit so you don't throw anything back. Pulev is going to start landing stiff jabs. Stiff jabs. I'm just telling you, these are the kind of jabs that can take a guy with chin problems. Right? He's supposed to have been knocked down in practice by people like David Price. We know he was dropped by Dylan White in the amateurs. He's dropped in the professional ranks by Vladimir Klitschko, dropped hard. Then he's dropped multiple times by Andy Ruiz. Folks, Joshua doesn't have that many fights under his belt. Right? When I see a guy like this who has some chin problems, having grown up in the Larry Holmes era, I know Pulev, who only has 14 KOs, will have a shot if Joshua gets desperate and realizes late that he needs a stoppage to win the fight and isn't close enough to Pulev to throw an uppercut. I'm just telling you that if Pulev plays it right and Joshua overcommits, swings and misses, Pulev is going to have an opportunity, in my opinion, to put him down, to take him out, to win the heavyweight title with at least one knockdown in the fight. Let's talk about it. I know there are those who disagree strongly with me. I've seen interviews of David Hay where he shakes his head and he basically says, look, this is a mismatch. He believes Joshua is going to run through Kubrat Pulev. What I want people to do here is to look at Pulev's history. Decorated amateur, only one loss, one loss as a professional. That was to Vladimir Klitschko. I encourage people to look at that fight. Understand, Klitschko had to get out of his own shell. Had to start leading with power shots to win that fight. Now I know Joshua and Klitschko behind the scenes are actually good friends. I get the feeling Joshua wants to be great. And he's talking with a fighter who's traveled the same roads. Right? Klitschko, of course, was heavyweight champ for several years. And I'm positive that when they've spoken, Klitschko has said to him, look, you have to lead with power shots. 
You cannot box Kubrat Pulev. If you box him, you're going to get beaten. Klitschko has a jab, understand. A jabber like Pulev is accustomed to guys trying to jab with him. That's part of being a jabber. Right? If both guys shoot their jab all night, Pulev wins a decision. Right? Be aware of the scoring. The fight is in the UK. But I believe there's a gap in terms of boxing ability here. So let's be clear on this. Understand, just the gap in boxing ability should nullify this 7-1 to one line. Now I'm not saying Joshua isn't the blessed puncher here. I'm not saying that Joshua doesn't have two-handed power and that Joshua might not be able to end the fight on a single punch. I'm not saying that at all. Understand. The Andy Ruiz apocalypse fight. Joshua scores the first knockdown in that fight. Right? But what I am saying here is at 39, Kubrat Pulev firmly believes he's the best heavyweight on the planet. Folks, when he gets off the canvas against Vladimir Klitschko, he sticks his tongue out at Klitschko. He lifts one foot off the canvas. He really believed he was going to beat Klitschko that night. Right? In my opinion, the fact that Pulev is the mandatory, not a chosen opponent, the fact that Joshua is cautious and has to get out of his scripted construct, has to actually take risks early against a guy who's a sharpshooter who can use that jab either as a lead or as a counter when a guy misses him. The fact that Pulev older has the mental edge. The fact that, and there is a cultural part to this fight, let's be clear on that. The fact that Joshua ran in the rematch against Andy Ruiz and is now fighting at home and is known as a slugger, the fact that his brand is built on knockouts, not running, means that Joshua cannot fight the fight that he fought against Andy Ruiz and expect to win. In other words, he's in against a jabber who, in my opinion, is going to own the pocket. Let's be clear. I expect Pulev to own the pocket. And Joshua will not be able to for cultural reasons. We'll call it political reasons. Right? His brand, the fact that Pulev only has 14 KOs, Joshua won't be able to just move around the ring to hit and run. He cannot be up on his toes flicking a jab like an Ali would. Because his brand is Foreman, not Ali. Right? To me, all of this favors Kubrat Pulev. So what I want people to do, and what I'm going to say here is politically incorrect, right? You could blame me or you could blame political correctness. I've posted in my favorites folder highlights from Kubrat Pulev's fight against Yui Fury, a guy who moves much better, has better legs than Anthony Joshua. Right now, Understand, Fury is interesting because he's tall like Joshua. He tries to set up a length game, right? He tries to time Pulev's jab. Just look at the film. And he tries to jump in with long right hands. What you're going to notice in that fight, and that fight's interesting early, before the cut that Fury gets, what you'll notice in that fight is Pulev has a defensive construct. This is the vet who's very cagey. Pulev has a defensive construct where when he's fighting tall, rangy fighters like Anthony Joshua, and they're trying to come in, Fury's trying to lead with power shots. They're trying to come in with right hands. Pulev is prepared to sidestep to get inside of the right hand. 
to tie up. Yui Fury is completely defensed by Kubrat Pulev before Pulev then starts opening up. Right then you'll notice too. He would hit Fury, then he'd immediately come in and tie him up. Right, folks? He mentally broke Yui Fury. If you watch that fight, by the second half of that fight, Fury knew that he was being outthought in the ring. His spirit was broken. If you want to see a guy who fought some big names, knock down Vladimir Klitschko multiple times in a fight, and yet was so blown out by Kubrat Pulev that he just gave up. In my favorites folder, heavy hitter, just like Joshua, is the fight between Pulev and Sam Peter. Right now, Sam Peter is on his front foot in the fight. Right? He's actually heavy-handed guy. He's actually trying to hunt down Kubrat Pulev. You'll notice Pulev knows how to move backwards and set up the jab. He starts landing the jab. It's landing flush. You notice the spirit of Sam Peter leave the room. Peter fought Vitaly Klitschko. Peter fought Vladimir Klitschko. He never looked this bad. Peter gives up after three rounds. So what I'm expecting here, especially since Joshua strikes me as a guy with some stamina problems, and understand, that can offset the age gap. Joshua is bone-tired, needed a second wind against Vladimir Klitschko. Joshua looks bone-tired at the end of the first Andy Ruiz fight. There's an exchange in that fight between Joshua and the ref, where the ref says, step forward, or something like that. And Joshua just looks spent, doesn't he? So you're talking about a situation where if Joshua doesn't blow out Kubrat Pulev early, and that's the hedge, Joshua by KO, if Joshua does not blow out Kubrat Pulev early, if he doesn't drop Pulev early, like Vladimir Klitschko did. And if a boxing match breaks out, and if Joshua cannot handle a 6-4 guy, Pulev is not slight. Pulev is not small. He's a 6-4 guy who's actually manhandling him. In other words, landing the crisper jab. Right? If Joshua tries to jab with the jabber, I'm telling you, he's going to be at a disadvantage. Right? Then if he ends up on the wrong end of Pulev's jab, as Derek Chisora did, understand, Pulev is a guy who's fought people, as Ustinov did, another big guy, right? Tall guy, who Pulev riddled. He gave Ustinov his first loss. If Joshua finds himself getting hit by the jab, and then grabbed by Kubrat Pulev, who knows how to clinch every 20 seconds or so to stop any momentum in the fight from the opponent. I believe Joshua's going to get frustrated. He's going to get desperate. He's going to start swinging for the fences. He's going to start getting countered. Right? Understand, as Joshua has moved into fighting elite competition, the Povetkin fight, for example. You're actually noticing that Joshua is a slow starter. Right? He's a slow starter against Vladimir Klitschko. Against Povetkin, I know this is not the scorecard the press had. Revisit the early rounds of that fight. Povetkin's moving better than him. Joshua's trying to figure out the angles. Right? Fortunately for him... Povetkin is a guy who leaves the pocket. Povetkin's episodic. Now that's not Kubrat Pulev. If Joshua's trying to figure out why Pulev's jab is hitting him in the face, 
and why his jab isn't touching. Kubrat Pulev, understand, Pulev's not going to be dancing around the ring. Pulev's going to be right there in front of him. Right? If you set up a dynamic similar to the one Pulev set up in the Sam Peter fight, Joshua is going to be in bad shape. You'll hit the ninth round. Both guys will be tiring. Joshua's in with a highly skilled guy who has the timing down. Don't be confused too by the jab. With some right-handed guys, you see a guy throwing a left jab and you say, oh, that jab's just a perfunctory punch. Right? That jab is just to keep the guy outside. I'm just telling you that a really good jab does more than that. It actually hurts the opponent. Now, if you're a guy who doesn't have an iron chin, I'm just telling you the jab can do much more than that. This might be a fight that you're watching where Joshua starts getting hit with jabs. He looks fine one minute. The next minute, he looks wobbly. Right? Such is what a good jab can do. I want people to revisit, too, the heavyweight reign. I know it's short. In fact, not just the heavyweight reign. Go back before the heavyweight reign, when he's beating people like Cleveland Williams. Look at Sonny Liston. Right? Sonny Liston would come in. Sonny would hit an opponent with a jab. The opponent would try to jab back. Somehow, the opponent's jabs never seemed to hit Sonny Liston. Right? Sonny's jab was landing with regularity, right? Sonny, I know the reputation is Sonny was a murderous puncher. I know we remember him, you know, taking Floyd Patterson's title by hooks, right? Okay, fine. The real Sonny Liston was actually a technician who lived off his jab. The jab softened up opponents to the point where by the time Sonny threw right hands, the, the opponent was already good to go. Are you sure? Are you sure that 6-4 Kubrat Pulev can't do that to a younger, greener heavyweight champion? who recently got stopped. Are you positive? Right? Let's also look more closely at Joshua's record. Look, I'm impressed by the fact that Joshua has beaten the guys he's beaten. I'm someone who actually believes Dominique Brazil is talented. Dylan White is talented. Joseph Parker is talented. Right? I give Joshua credit. Alexander Povetkin's talented. I give Joshua credit for winning those fights. But let's just say, as you look more closely at those fights, they're troubling moments, aren't there? The Klitschko fight, I'm positive that Vitaly Klitschko, to this day, in the corner of his younger brother, was thinking, dude, why didn't you win that fight? By the way, the conversation the brothers had in the corner during the fight, as they later said, right, they, might have been, they may have been speaking in a foreign language, but they were talking about Joshua's muscles. Both brothers thought the fight was over. They thought Joshua was going to completely fall apart in the 8th, ninth, and 10th rounds. Understand, boxing is a bit of a prism, uh, right? We're all seeing different angles here. It's a house of mirrors. The fans see Joshua's chaos, right? Dylan White, oh my God. You know, did Dylan White even know where he was when he hits the bottom rope? We see the chaos and they look dramatic. But the fighters themselves, and I know everyone's polite after the fight, but the fighters themselves had doubts about him during his biggest moments. 
So I'll just put it to you this way. The Klitschko brothers are talking to each other. They say, look at all those muscles. He's going to be too tired to go the distance. That's what they thought about him. Right? Go back to the Dylan White fight. Dylan White has a jab for about half of the first round. Right? And Dylan White has a very good jab. Folks, the jab was landing. Dylan White, he's around. He loves giving interviews. Dylan White hurts his shoulder in that first round. Loses the jab. Right? Loses the jab. That's when a different Joshua shows up. That's when Joshua starts moving forward against him. Right? Andy Ruiz, do you think if Andy Ruiz beat prime Mike Tyson, the first fight, and there's a rematch clause for a rematch, do you feel that Andy Ruiz would have taken training lightly and gained weight? Let's say Andy fought Lennox Lewis, beats Lennox Lewis the first fight. Lewis lost some fights, right? Lost to Oliver McCall, lost to Hasim Rockman, right? Let's say Andy Ruiz beats Lewis, catches Lewis like Rockman did, beats him the first fight. Do you believe that Andy Ruiz would then, you know, take training lightly, gain weight, you know, uh, hang out, party and stuff, knowing there's a rematch? I believe Andy did that because... Again, there's some boxers out there who doubt Anthony Joshua. I know that's hard for people to believe. I know many of you are going to say DeWire's an American. Even though I was born in Kingston, Jamaica, DeWire's an American. Um, he's just trying to diss a British fighter. He's in Deontay Wilder's back pocket, etc. Right? Okay, look. Fine. Think what you want. Just understand, it's just part of the record. Right, that Vladimir Klitschko and Vitaly Klitschko thought Joshua was just going to fade in the second half of the fight. Right, as it was, he's dead on his feet in the seventh round. Look up Alexander Povetkin's comments after his fight with Joshua. Now, don't get me wrong, Povetkin gets knocked out. He knows he lost the fight. This is boxing. Sometimes guys get caught. But Povetkin, in his post-fight comments, Thought he was ahead in the fight at the time of the stoppage. He thought he was cooking. Quite frankly, watching the fight, I thought he was cooking. So what you have here, in a division where the fighters age more slowly than everyone else. Right? Who knows how old Sonny Liston actually was when he won the heavyweight title? Right? The heavyweight... <laughs> The heavyweight division is a division where George Foreman in his 40s wins a title, right? Look at some of the guys right now who are among the most dangerous people to fight, right? Luis Ortiz, how old is he? 39, 40? How old was Vladimir Klitschko when he dropped Anthony Joshua, right? Heavyweights, if you're up in your late 30s and you're a lightweight, okay, you got problems. At heavyweight, you're still in the mix, so Kubrat Pulev, a guy who beat Tony Thompson, a guy who beat Derek Chisora, who just gave a spirited performance against the same Alexander Usyk that Joshua wants to avoid. He wants to fight Tyson Fury next, right? Understand, a Tyson Fury fight, unless the WBO looks away from their own regulations, wouldn't be for the undisputed heavyweight championship. Because the WBO would say, whoa, whoa, player, Usyk's our mandatory. You're not fighting our mandatory. Give us back the belt. Well, understand, Chisora just fought Usyk. That was a spirited matchup. You know what? Chisora against Pulev wasn't a spirited. So I'll just say this. Seven to one, you're kidding me. Even if you feel Joshua has the advantage in this fight, it's more of a 55-45 type deal. So, I'm going to take a risk, folks. It's gambling. <laughs> okay? If you haven't figured it out, 
Gambling is about taking risks. I'll be the casino's Huckleberry. I'll take the seven to one. Again, the seven to one for Pulev to win the fight, and I'll hedge the play with Joshua by stoppage. But what I want is for people to understand the real risk involved here. If this fight goes to a decision in a country that already has Tyson Fury as the lineal heavyweight champion, as a WBC heavyweight champion, in a country that would love to have two Englishmen fight for a unified heavyweight championship, right? If it goes the distance and the judges, rightly or wrongly, award the decision to Anthony Joshua, you lose it all. That's the risk I'm taking. Put differently, I'm expecting Pulev, if this fight goes to a decision, to clearly win the fight. To clearly win the fight by a few rounds, right? Joshua's momentum has been shaken, folks by that Andy Ruiz loss. Understand how bad that loss was. And I know the promoters will tell you whatever you want to hear. They're trying to sell tickets. They're trying to get in your pockets and into your wallets, right? But Joshua came to New York. Didn't make the best first impression. Lost to Andy Ruiz. He didn't come back to New York. He fights the rematch in Saudi Arabia, I believe, right? Fights a different fight. He himself believed that if he stayed in the pocket against Andy Ruiz, a guy who was a last minute replacement for Gerald Miller the first time around, he was gonna have problems. So his corner's plan and his plan was to shoot a jab and move around the ring, right? I'm just telling you, that strategy was a one-off. Maybe, maybe it would work against Tyson Fury, right? Maybe because Tyson's mobile. Maybe the crowd would interpret it as Joshua channeling Tyson, daring Tyson to fight his own game. Kubrat Pulev is going to be on the lip of the pocket. He's going to be, you know, on the edge of the pocket shooting a jab, right? Timing your jab, coming in, with counter jabs. Then he's going to step deep in the pocket and tie you up. Look at the Yui Fury fight. Then when you start throwing right hands, pull up, excuse me, is going to use that as an opportunity to riddle you with the jab. Folks, there are times in the Fury fight. There are times in the Derek Chisora fight. Talk about a front foot heavy fighter where both Fury and Chisora are back up against the ropes. Understand the expectations here, given that Joshua is a 7-1 to favorite. If Fury, excuse me, if Pulev the jabber backs Joshua up to the ropes and is riddling him with punches, my goodness, fans are going to be in disbelief. We're closer to that happening than the 7 to 1 odds suggest. I believe the play, if you're looking for, gam for value, given that the odds are so lopsided, is to take the 39-year-old Kubrat Pulev, who has only lost to Vladimir Klitschko. And let's remember, Klitschko, like Joshua, had a rocky road, right? Loses to Ross Purity. Gets blown out by Corey Sanders. Loses to Lehman Brewster, right? Somewhere along the line, picks up Emmanuel Stewart as his trainer, right? The Klitschko, who then makes the great run late in his career, had been through twists and turns. Are you certain that Joshua is past that stage of his career? How developed is Joshua's jab? How confident are you that Joshua knows his way around the pocket? 
I like the underdog here at 7-1. to one. I'll hedge the play with the champion by stoppage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.